Thanks for watching the video. Today we are going to introduce the recent release of VD2 Servo, the history and development plan of Wekin Servo. The first generation of Servo VD1 was born in 2019, only 400 watt and 750 watt, using a single core DSP plus 2500 lines of optical encoder, according to feedback from after sales, although performance is as good as top brand and critical situation, but good. Reliability gains the reputation for further VD2 development. In 2020, we launched the VD2 series of servos with new models added from 1000 watt to 2300 watt. Same 2500 lines of optical encoder, but the CPU has been upgraded to dual core DSP and FPGA. After that, Absolute Encoder of VD2 Servo was introduced, which supports Absolute Encoders ranging from 17 bits to 23 bits and the model also covers 200 watt to 700 watt. Also in fourth quarter of 2021, the high performance servos VE is available for testing which supports EtherCAT communication. Definitely, it must be more power hardware platform. Now I going to introduce VD2 series of servo in details, VD2 has the same gray color scheme as VD1. There are two appearance, a type is smaller size for 200 watt to 750 watt only. B type is bigger for 1000 watt to 2300 watt. Here are some brief characteristic of VD2. With dual core hardware scheme, four times faster in response speed than VD1. Absolute and incremental encoders are available for choices. Here is picture of motor of VD2 for 750 watt, 80 flange. Let's make a comparison. The motor at the top of the picture is a VD1 750 watt, 80 flange motor, and the bottom is a VD2 750 watt, 80 flange motor. The upper part is about 15 cm, and the lower part is less than 10 cm. The size is much shorter. In this photo, the left is the 750 watt, 80 flange servo motor of a famous brand, and the right is the 750 watt, 80 flange motor of Wekin's VD2. Wekin has achieved the smallest motor of its class on the market. Now let's talk about the main characteristics of the VD2 motor. The VD2 motor uses the third generation 5-pole motor. The motor body and flange are integrated design, which is better protected, and more importantly, its heat dissipation effect will be better. We know that the inside of the motor uses a coil of enameled wire to generate a rotating magnetic field to push the magnetic rod inside the rotor to rotate. But the enameled wire will definitely generate heat, and the heat dissipation is related to the volume of the motor housing. The VD2 motor is shorter than the VD1 motor. How to ensure the heat dissipation effect? It is the one-piece design that conducts heat to the flange, and then conducts the heat to the machine through the mechanical structure. According to our actual test, under the same conditions, the temperature rise of the VD2 motor will not be worse than that of the VD1. In addition, VD2 also uses a split encoder behind the motor, so the length of the VD2 motor is shortened. Among the components of the motor, the magnetic rod and the bearing account for a large cost. However, among various products, these two are also the parts that are most likely to be cut corners. It is difficult for customers to find problems in early applications. Only when the bearings are worn to a certain degree and the magnetic rods begin to demagnetize, the problems will appear. The VD2 motor uses TPI bearings from Taiwan, China, and enjoys a high reputation in the industry. The magnetic rod uses the N38SH standard, but some products use N38H. N38H has a temperature resistance of 120 degrees Celsius, and N38SH has a temperature resistance of 150 degrees Celsius. The slight difference in the standard is a huge gap for the product. In addition, our enameled wire uses H-level, 180 degrees Celsius, high temperature enameled wire. In order to ensure the quality of the motor, we use better materials. After introducing the motor, let's look at the characteristics of the VD2 servo drive. The most important characteristic of a servo drive is fast. How to make the servo drive faster? The Wekin VD1 series servo has selected the DSP CPU plus FPGA solution. We know that most other brands of servo products do not use DSP processors, 
but use relatively inexpensive ARM processors, such as ARM M0, M3, M4. The main strength of DSP is digital signal processing. For example, sound processing, image processing, and signal processing must use DSP for high algorithm requirements. This is widely used in the military, aerospace, and aviation fields. There are high-speed current loops, PIDs, and various filtering algorithms in Wacken Servo. These are the strengths of DSP CPUs. Therefore, the VD2 series of servo drives not only still use the DSP CPU solution, but also use the dual DSP CPU, plus two additional accelerators, as well as FPGA as an auxiliary. Through calculation, the VD2 current loop speed is increased to 5K, which is four times as VD1, which makes VD2 to calculate faster, respond faster, and control with more accuracy. In addition to fast calculations, we also sample fast. Our VD1 series has only one internal ADC. We use serial sampling. U phase current, V phase current, and bus voltage are sampled in turn through the same ADC, so sampling output is slow, and the current has to be output in next cycle. But our VD2 series has sufficient ADC, so U phase, V phase, and bus voltage can be sampled at the same time, plus high DSP processing can achieve a single cycle current output. In addition to speed, another important parameter is accuracy. VD2 supports maximum 23-bit encoder, and there are approximately 8.38 million pulses per revolution, so the positioning accuracy is very high. The encoder not only affects the positioning accuracy, but also affects other performances. In a small range, the high-speed DSP can quickly recognize whether the motor's rotation trend is faster or slower, which shows higher sensitivity of the servo, and stronger rigidity of the servo. Reliability is the essence of industrial automation. In order to ensure the reliability of our servo, first, we use components from well-known brands. Second, in the production process, such as the production of boards, we have strict conformal coding, and thirdly, third, we have strict tests. The picture in the upper left is the picture of our board test, and each board has been strictly tested. The following picture is our factory test of the whole machine. The servo can only pass the factory test after running it on this whole system. The picture on the right shows high temperature aging. All servos and motor leaves the factory after aging. In addition, our servo is equipped with self-checking and fault alarm functions. When there is a problem, the servo can stop immediately to avoid the expansion of the fault. Below we introduce the commands of our servo characteristics. The first one is the multi-step speed command function. Our servo can have eight built-in different speeds. Through the DI input on the servo, we can control the specific running speed. The following figure shows that we can accurately control different speeds through internal commands. The typical application of this command is the application of cream extruder. Similar to multi-stage speed command, servo DI control and start displacement. We can see this example. After I control and drive the displacement of the bow and arrow through DI in different stations, I can realize the first displacement station to the second station, the third station, to the fourth station, and finally return to the origin of the first station. When we need to use a lot of input I.O. ports and DI for the servo too many wiring causes inconvenience. In order to reduce wiring or when the number of PLC output points is not enough, it can be used to change the function. This function is to control and realize the virtual DI input through the 485 bus, which is convenient for on-site wiring. A typical example is a tapping machine. A torque reaching threshold is set internally in the servo. When the torque is reached, there will be a valid do output to notify the PLC that the torque has arrived. A typical case is a packaging machine. The knife of the packaging machine is constantly moving. When the material is accidentally cut due to abnormalities, the servo torque will increase. The PLC will be told through the output IO that the PLC will immediately request the cutter to return to avoid damage. When on site, many machines make less than two revolutions or there is no computer on site, there is no way to identify the load inertia when the host computer, or the load inertia ratio is consistent. However, 
it is necessary to know the current load inertia, so there is a tool for load inertia identification. As long as the PLC inputs acceleration and deceleration pulses to the servo, the advantage of the servo dual-core CPU can quickly calculate the load inertia ratio. Finally, it is displayed in the monitoring quantity U0-16. The value of the inertia ratio can be read out by pressing the key or communication. When the inertia ratio is found to be relatively stable, it can also be displayed in the parameters. U0-12 is mainly when the PLC sends pulses to the servo, the pulses may be inconsistent, or the PLC sends pulses. The servo does not rotate, or the pulse line has interference problems. By observing the frequency of the servo pulse input and the frequency sent by the PLC, it is not consistent, and it is easy to troubleshoot problems on the spot. U33 and 34 can judge the load of the motor, whether there is overload, whether the output power is too large or too small, and whether the selection of the motor is correct. This is the fault information browsing, U1 is the fault code. In case of failure, the state of failure time will be played automatically. You can hold down the M and Shift buttons. The drive will display the fault code and information of the last failure. Engineers can judge the problem based on the information. This is the servo software. You can set parameters in the software, monitor the running status of the servo, debug, view waveforms, and query faults. When you click on a parameter, there will be a description of the parameter below. When you double-click the parameter, you can set it after batch use. You can batch import or export parameters. The software support batch modify parameters, saved and backed up the parameters separately. One click import, one click download. Improve the efficiency of parameter configuration. This makes it easier for engineers to debug multiple devices. We have four channel real time oscilloscope, its support recording function, convenient for remote debugging. Support up to 10 seconds waveform recording. Support capture, easy to view waveform. Support the capture of original waveform data, accurately restore the dynamic details of the scene. When the customer has a problem, the waveform can be sent to the engineer to judge the on-site situation. In this video, you can see how to using real-time oscilloscope to adjust parameters. You can recording a 10 seconds waveform to analysis. Usually we can according to the changes in the waveform to make timely adjustments. The servo parameters are not adjusted properly, it's like a car running at a high speed use first gear. PID parameter tuning. What if they are not experienced engineers? WEC and servo software provide easy solution, it help engineer to set parameters. The video is show self tuning progress. After the parameter self tuning, the waveform is displayed normally. We have three ways to configure servo parameters. The key, software and HMI. It can easily implement one key configuration. VD2 servo and motor model selection. This is servo drivers naming rules. This is VD2 servo and motor product lineup. Thank you for your watching. Bye bye.